morning to you all. Good morning, Father. Last Easter Sunday, which was April the 9th, we began a countdown of 50 days toward the Feast of Pentecost. And today we are on day number 36. So we have 14 more days to prepare our soul for the Feast of Pentecost. And we're going to do something really special that I don't think we've ever done here before on this Feast of Pentecost that I will announce at the end of Mass. Now, on Pentecost, the apostles and those disciples that were gathered with them experienced an incredible outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And all of them were filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And they were given very special gifts to serve and to grow and to spread God's kingdom all over the world. Now, the Greek word in the New Testament that is used for gifts with the special gifts is pronounced charisma. Would you pronounce that with me? Charisma. In English, it's pronounced charism. And what is a charism? What are charisms? Let me give you a simple definition. Please repeat after me. Charisms are... Charisms are... Gifts of the Holy Spirit... Gifts of the Holy Spirit... Given to the body of Christ... Given to the body of Christ... For the common good. For the common good. That's it. They are gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to us, the mystical body of Christ, for the common good. So the charism is a special gift from the Holy Spirit that's not meant for you. It's meant for, not for your own good, but for the common good. It, it's, it's a gift for, for the people that God wants to reach through you. In other words, charisms are gifts that the Holy Spirit gives you to use in serving others. For example, in the first reading today, Philip was healing and delivering people, uh, uh, people from Samaria. And those were gifts or charisms that the Holy Spirit had given Philip. Other examples of charisms are, for example, miracles or teaching. Like, I believe I have the charism of teaching. Or music. I believe Miss Ancida has a charism of music. Or encouragement. Or hospitality. Or giving. Or administration. Like, I believe Mrs. Josie has a charism of administration. Or leadership. Or intercession. There's so many charisms. I've counted 29 different charisms in the New Testament. But really, only God knows the total number of charisms that he gives to his children. Now, every person who is baptized and confirmed has been given several charisms. You have charisms. And it's your job to discover what are your gifts, your charisms, and then use them to serve God and to serve others. In fact, that's what a ministry is, like I explained last week. A ministry is the area where you use your God-given gifts and charisms to serve God and to serve others. Next month, on the weekend of June the 4th, we will have a ministry fair. And our goal is for every member of the church to serve in one ministry here at the church or in like a mission like out there in the world in Belize or beyond. Yet here is what we're asking you to do today. Today, all you have to do is continue to pray about where God has gifted you to serve. If you could do like anything for God, imagine like no boundaries, no limits. You could do anything for God. What would you do? What would you do? What's like your heart's desire? What did God put in your heart? Pray about that. And then prepare your heart to serve simply out of love for God and out of love for people. So next, then next weekend, we will give you like a list of all the possible ministries here in the church so that you can begin to read them and look at them and pray about them. And then on June the 4th, you know, we're going to give you like a little sign up to serve on that ministry fair. And you could actually like sign up for a couple of different ministries. And you have the chance before to talk to a few people and just to ask them, well, what do you do in that ministry? How is it? Now, you might be interested in starting like something totally new, a brand new ministry. That's awesome. We will certainly bless you and encourage you to do that. My job is to help you find a ministry where you will be very joyful and very fruitful so that you can really make a difference in other people's lives. Now, that said, turn with me to today's gospel. According to John chapter 14, verse 15 forward, in which Jesus speaks about the Holy Spirit. 
Now, the Bible uses different names to refer to the Holy Spirit. And each one of these names shows us like a little different aspect of who the Holy Spirit is. For example, in today's gospel, John 14, verse 15 to 16 says this. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Okay, so let's stop there for a moment. Let's analyze, sort of break open these verses. Jesus begins by making a conditional statement. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. To Jesus, to Jesus, the ultimate test of true love is obedience to his commandments. You see, love is much more than just an emotion. Love, more, love is much more than just passing sentiments. Love is much more than just words or lip service. According to Jesus, if we truly love him, then we will keep his commandments, obey them. And what will Jesus do if we love him and keep his commandments? Check it out. Verse 16. I will ask the Father, and the Father will give you, do you remember who? Another advocate. So Jesus calls the Holy Spirit another advocate. Another one just like me basically saying. Now, the original Greek word translated advocate is, please repeat after me, paraclete. 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 Not like a parakeet, like the bird, but a paraclete. Okay, what is a paraclete? Well, a paraclete is a title of the Holy Spirit that means an advocate. That means a helper. It means someone who comes alongside of you to, like, plead your cause. Someone to defend you, like a lawyer, but like a really good lawyer. A a paraclete is like a, a good friend that encourages you. Gives you strength, comforts you, defends you. Paraclete is like like a perfect mom, you could say. You see, the Holy Spirit is like someone who comes alongside of you to empower you to achieve things that you couldn't do on your own. Let me give you a personal example. Many years ago, my dad and I, we took a trip to the city of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Beautiful place. And one day, I told my dad that I wanted to fly in a hand glider that I saw landing on the beach. And my dad so hired an instructor, and while my dad waited on the beach, we went up this very high mountain near the beach. And the instructor and I, we were attached together to a a harness under the hand glider. And after he gave me some instructions, we started to literally run toward the edge of a 2,000 foot cliff. And at that moment, I started getting nervous, in fact, afraid. It was like, oh my, we're running to the cliff. And my heart started beating like a thousand, you know, bits per second. And because, at the, and the adrenaline started pushing, you know, flowing. And because at that moment, I realized that my life was in the, in the hands of this man. And I just met him 30 minutes ago. And man, I started praying. It's like, oh Lord, I hope this man knows what he's doing. It's not going to go well if he doesn't, you know. And then, but when we jumped, we found this updraft. Literally a gush of wind blowing up the side of the mountain. And we started climbing even higher. I mean, we started going up. And I felt like, you know, like Superman. After I relaxed, I felt like Superman. Check out this picture right here. There it is, jumping off the mountain. Right there, like that. (laughs) And we stayed up. I mean, we were literally flying with some eagles there. I remember seeing some eagles around us. And we stayed up there for over 30 minutes. We could have kept going, except I started getting dizzy. And I thought I was going to throw up. So we started coming down to land on the beach. Check out the next photo as we're preparing to land on the beach. Over there. That's the beach where we're going to land on. And all this time, my dad was waiting for us on this beach. Sort of cheering me on. He was so excited for me. I remember he was so, like, proud of me, my dad. You see, the Holy Spirit is like that instructor that is harnesses himself to you. And then he empowers you to take the risk to do things that, that are beyond your natural powers or abilities or experience that you could never do on your own. I, I could never do that on my own. And all the while, you know where God is? God of the Father is like on that beach in heaven, so proud of us and cheering us on. Go, my son. Go, my daughter. Flying up like this, it always reminds me of a secular song. It's titled, Up Where We Belong. 
And it's sung by Joe Cocker. I don't know if you know it, but it goes a little bit like, goes a little bit like this. I don't do it justice, but it goes like this. The road is long. There are mountains in our way, but we climb a step every day. And then the chorus goes, if you know it, sing it with me. Love lift us up where we belong, where the eagles cry on a mountain high. Love lift us up where we belong, up where the clear winds blow. I wouldn't make it an American Idol, I know that. Now, <laughs> Now, the point is, when we sing, love lift us up where we belong, we're actually asking the Holy Spirit, who is God's love, to come alongside of us and to lift us up to where we belong. For example, if you're like in the valley of depression, ask the Holy Spirit to lift you up to joy. That's where you belong. If you're in the valley of vengeance and you ask the Holy Spirit to come alongside of you, lift you up to forgiveness. That's where you belong. If you're in despair, to lift you up to hope. If you, are, you, if you are in fear, to lift you up to boldness and courage. If you're like stingy, to lift you up to generosity. If you're like in the valley of self-pity, to lift you up to self-love and joy. You know, if you're in sin, to lift you up to holiness. And if you are dying, to lift you up all the way to heaven because that's where we all belong. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's a little bit of who the Holy Spirit is. And this Pentecost, we can be sort of refilled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yet notice that in verse 16 it says, He will give you another advocate to be with you how long? Always. Always. Today I think the greatest epidemic in the Western world is, is not cancer or AIDS or COVID. I think it's loneliness. You know, during the pandemic, the loneliness and social isolation were, were very destructive. And yet, I think the greatest loneliness and the greatest isolation is when we live without a relationship with God. I think that's truly the deepest loneliness. And there's so many people like that. They can't be there by themselves because God isn't, they, they don't have that relationship. Now, I have got really good news. If you are lonely, if that's you, then you ask the Holy Spirit to come alongside of you, to harness himself to you, and to lift you up to where you belong. To be with you always. Because when you enter this relationship with the Holy Spirit, you'll never ever feel alone again. How is this possible? What Jesus explains in the next verse, verse 17, he says, because the Holy Spirit will remain with you and in you. So the Holy Spirit will not only be with you, will also be actually inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit from inside of you empowers you to do things that you could never do, yet you could never do. Yet remember, Jesus promises to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit only to those who do what? Verse 15, love him and keep his commandments. In other words, the Holy Spirit is sent within the context of love and obedience to Christ. So if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then you have to be committed to love Christ and to obey Christ. That's it. At least try. Say, okay, I'm going to give it my best shot. Then that's enough. That's, well, that's the disposition necessary to like, receive the Spirit. Now, I haven't forgotten that today is Mother's Day here in Belize, and you know, the Holy Spirit is like a perfect mother. That's by your side to help you and obey, you, to help you to love and obey and serve Christ. You know, we are born in the Holy Spirit into eternal life, and, and the Holy Spirit forms us to become the best version of ourselves. That's what moms do, right? Moms not only give birth to us, they encourage us, they come alongside of us, they walk with us, and they try to really encourage us to become the best version of ourselves. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Okay, all those moms that are here today, including like pregnant women or mothers of adopted children or even godmothers, I invite you to raise your hand right now. All those moms out there, please raise your hand nice and high. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your mission in life is huge. The world you are called to serve is 
your family. And sometimes that's a difficult one. That's a difficult mission. So, okay. All the mothers that are here, do me a favor. Draw in the air a heart, but the size of your heart. Like, what's the size of your heart? How big a heart can you draw me? I want to see those hearts, mothers. Don't, none of this chicken hearts, please. No, no, no. Big hearts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because little heart, nothing fits in it. When your heart, ha your heart has to be really big to put up with all of us. You know, when a home, there is a mother with like a really big heart. That home really has the capacity to reconcile, to forgive, to unite, to love, and to serve Christ with all their heart. That home has the capacity to just be in, just immersed in that love of that mother. Well, today we wish to pray for all of you mothers. So I'm going to ask all of the mothers, if you are able, to please stand right there in your place. And we just want to pray a blessing over you. If you're able to stand, just stand right there. We're going to pray a blessing over you. And so I invite the others just to extend a hand of blessing over the, the nearest mom to you. And, and just sort of just pray with me in your heart. Our powerful Father, we thank you first of all for our blessed mother in heaven, the blessed Virgin Mary. We also thank you for those mothers that are already in your presence in heaven. Please give them a big hug for us. Lord, we ask you to bless all the mothers that are pregnant. Please assist them with your constant protection. Lord, we also ask your assistance for the mothers of adopted children or also godmothers. We ask that you strengthen all young mothers who are fighting for their little children. Please accompany and anticipate the needs of all single mothers, divorced mothers, or widowed mothers. Loving Father, we ask also your consolation upon those mothers that are suffering from loneliness. We ask that you send your spirit to them, to harness the spirit, harness to them, and, in, and, in, and fill them with your presence. We also pray for the energy and stamina for all working mothers. We pray for the restoration of health of those mothers that are sick. And we also pray for special strength and fortitude for those mothers of sick children or, or children with special needs. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to fill all of these mothers here today with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with faith and hope and peace and love and patience and joy and kindness. But above all, give them, Lord, a heart so big and so filled with your love that it has room for all of us. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And let's give a hand to all these mothers. At the end of Mass, we have a special gift for all the moms. <laughs>